job on this debate so far by opponents Bob and Patrick and my partner Bob. I'm going to tell you what we should not have banned on gun control. Now, as of 2009, the United States has a population of 307 million people. Based on production data from firearm manufacturers, there are roughly 300 million firearms owned by civilians in the United States as of 2010. Of these, about 100 million are handguns. Now, based upon surveys from uh, justfacts.com slash gun control, the following are estimates of private firearm ownership in the U.S. as of 2010. Households with a gun percentage is 40 to 45 percent. Uh, the number is 47 to 53 million. The adults to owning a gun, the percentage is 30 to 34 percent, and the number would be 70 to 80 million. The adults owning a handgun, the percentage is 17 to 19 percent, and the number is 40 to 45 million. In the same poll, gun owners stated they own firearms for the following reasons. Protection against crime, which is 67%. Target shooting, 66%. And hunting, which is 58%. Now, based on a survey data from a 2000 study published in the Journal of Quantitative Criminology, Quantitative Criminology, U.S. civilians use guns to defend themselves and others from crime at least 989,883 times a year. Now, the leading Senate for negotiations on gun control legislation favor expanding background checks, but the effort will fall short of the universal approach backed by our President Barack Obama and many Democrats. Gun laws, they punish honest citizens. If guns were outlawed, criminals would still find a way to arm themselves, obviously. On the Second Amendment, was added to our Constitution, the founders believed that private ownership of guns was necessary for protection of our liberties. Now, citizens have the right to self-protection. Now, guns don't kill people, as everyone says people do. And we need to concentrate on the values and morals of our citizens and that the role the media plays in glorifying violence and the lack of respect for law. Now, guns protect the rights and freedom of the individual it was probably held guns that did help colonists rise up from the bridge. Now, Yahoo.com reported that there was four boys from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and their parents told them what to do with their home alone in danger. And they heard someone trying to break down the door. The oldest boy, 13, aimed 357 Magnum at the locked door while his brother dialed 911. An intruder entered the house, entered the house, headed straight for the bedroom to try to force the door open. That's when the oldest brother fired one shot through the door, killing the criminal. Now, the police found rubber gloves, a folding knife, and a large screwdriver in the man's pockets. Now, the boy's father says the firearms training that the boys received probably saved everyone's lives. No one could say what would have happened to those boys if the family had been restricted from having a gun by gun control laws. Now, whether or not strict gun control laws are a good thing is a subject all of you should be concerned with. Your freedom to protect yourself with a gun may be threatened by these gun control laws. Gun control laws are a legislative attempt to keep guns out of the hands of criminals. They generally place restriction on the ownership of certain firearms, and they can be passed on the local, state, or national level. One of the main arguments against gun control is based on the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which guarantees that the right of the people to keep bear arms shall not be infringed, as my opponents have said. Now, based on the Second Amendment, many, said, many citizens believe that gun control laws violate our constitutional rights. Now, it is estimated that some 70 million Americans own 200 million rifles and handguns. Early gun control laws include prohibiting private possession of submachine guns and saved off rifles, and banned the sale to known criminals in the 1930s. Now, in 1968, Congress passed the federal 
Federal Gun, Con um, Federal Gun Control Act, which prohibited interstate retailing of firearms. By 1989, some 22 states had passed waiting period legislation. These, along with the Brady Bill and the Omnibus Crime Bill, had slowly taken away our constitutional rights to bear arms. Now, many cities and states have banned handguns, non-detectable and plastic guns, and bullets that can penetrate protected vests. Certain guns require licenses or to be registered with local police. Now, one reason that gun control should not be made more strict is that criminals know that it's getting harder for the average citizen who is also a potential victim to get firearms. Now, knowing this, the criminals are most likely to confront ordinary citizens like us or anybody else. Now, if the laws are relaxed, criminals will know that a much larger number of citizens may be carrying guns, thus making the criminals less likely to confront people and know that there is no restriction on them.